Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to compute PET sample or dependent sample t-test manually. Okay, so let's look at an example. Okay, in, um, let's say that a researcher is interested to examine the change in anxiety score before and after taking a medication. So let's say that um, there was a, a group of patients and these um, psychology, uh, psychiatrists would like to examine if taking a particular drug okay, would, in, um, would reduce the uh, patient's anxiety level. So what they did was they get the patient, the participants or the sample. So they, they have about nine patients and what they did was they measured the, every patient's anxiety scores before taking any medication. So this before is actually the original, um, original anxiety scores of every patient. So what they did is after that they have been given medication. So they are given medication uh, let's say like for four weeks okay for almost a month and then what they did was they recalculated their anxiety scores okay so for the same patient so here what you need to identify is firstly you are using the same group of patients and getting same me uh, measuring the same information but different time points okay so you would like to see if there is any difference before and after taking the medication. So basically you want to see is there any change in the score okay, after taking the medication. So what is the step one? Always start with writing the null hypothesis. So what is H0 and H1 mean? So H0 is the H null. The null hypothesis is trying to say there is no difference in the to, uh, before and after scores there is actually um, there is no difference mean m the mean of the difference is equivalent to zero so when you say zero that means the difference between the scores that we get the average of the mean uh, the average of the difference that we get is equivalent to zero so when the average between the difference is equivalent to zero meaning there is no difference the score before and after is the same okay so what will be the alternate to it the alternate to it will be there the difference is not equivalent to zero the difference between score before and after is not equivalent to one when you take the average of it so, what will be the step 2? Okay, step 2 is to compute the T statistics. So, how do we compute the T statistics? Of course, as for other, um, other, other tests, we have formula. So, what is exactly the formula is doing? We are converting the raw information, which is the D, the difference between the scores into a T score. So what is the formula? So the sum of the difference divided by n and the, that product is being divided by the square root of the sum of d squared minus the sum of d square root divided by n and all together divided by n and minus 1 and take the square root of it. Okay. So here the d, the sum um, of d, the sum of d is the sum of differences. Sum of d squared is sum of the squared differences. n is the sample size or the number of observations you have. And d is actually the difference. So let's look at how did we get all these information. So we know that we have 9 patients and we have the scores before and after taking the medication. So what is the difference? What is d? The difference. Difference is the, uh, it's the difference between or the between the after and before score okay so what we can do is we take the we subtract the first score from the second score so 5 minus 3 so that's the difference between the two scores what is the next difference 1 minus 0 next 5 minus 6 7 minus 7 so all these are the difference between the two scores 
Now, once you get that, we square it. Okay. So, when you square it, neg 2 becomes 4. 1 becomes 1. Negative 1 becomes 1. So, all the way down up to the last score. So, basically, the second step you need to do is square the differences. That is add the differences. So, what you do next is you add all the difference value. So, 2 plus 1 plus negative 1 plus 6 plus 6 plus 5 plus 10 plus 4. So, when you add all the difference, you get 33. So, what will be the next step? We need to calculate the squared differences. Remember, we calculated the difference and then we calculated the squared ones. So, we add the squared differences. 4 plus 1 plus 1, 0 plus 36 plus 36 and uh, just 16, you get 2, 1, 9. So, based on that information, we can compute the T statistics. So, what is T statistics? So, the sum of... Um, the sum of the difference was 33, the sam total sample was 9, divided by the sum of d squared which is 219, minus 33 is the sum of d and then we square it, divide by 9 and all this divided by 9, multiplied by 9 minus 1. Take the square root of it and then we have to divide by 4 with the 33 over 9 value. So, when you solve this, you will get 3.134. So, what will be the next step? Okay, so we have to compute the T critical, the cut off values for us to make the comparison. Okay, so in order to find the cut off values, there are a few criteria that we have to consider. First one is the level of significance. Where did you put your confidence level? Okay, so Generally, we are setting it at 0 0.05. So, the alpha is at 0 0.05. So, for that, the tail, whether are we going to use one tail or two tail. Okay, in our uh, hypothesis, we did not tell the direction. We did not say that um, it will have increase or decrease. Or we did not, we did not specify. There is no directional hypothesis. So, we will go by two tail. Third one is degrees of freedom. So, what is degrees of freedom? It is the number of observation that can be freely estimated. Okay. So, it will be n minus 1. So, what is n? Number of participants minus 1. So, 9 minus 1, you get 8. So, from the t table with this for alpha 0 0.05, 2 tail and degrees of freedom of 8, you, your t critical will be 2.306. So, what will be the next step? So, step 4 is to compare these statistics with T critical to make decision. Now, we want to test our null hypothesis. So, we have to make a decision about the hypothesis. So, how do you make that some, uh, decision? So, we have to compute the T statistics and T critical. So, we if our t statistics is greater than the t critical, we reject the null. If our t statistic is less than t critical, then we accept the null. So, in this case, our t statistics is the value greater than the t critical. Therefore, we reject the null. So, how do we interpret it? The null hypothesis is rejected. So, always have to report the decision. What was your decision? Next, you have to say, there is a significant change. Okay, so it has to be change in individual's anxiety score after taking the medication. Okay, initially we said our null hypothesis was there is no change. That's why the mean of the differences or mean of the changes is equivalent to zero. Now we are trying to say it is not equivalent to zero. So what if it is not equivalent to zero meaning what there is a change so what type of change did we observe there is an increase in the people's anxiety after taking the medication so this shows that the medication has negative impact on the patients because when you look at the difference when you take the average of the difference okay when you take the average of the difference okay 
these are the difference so when you take the average of it it is positive is 33 so what does this 33 is trying to tell us it's trying to tell us that the second score are higher than the first score so meaning after taking the medication the patient's anxiety level has increased what does it tell us when you take a medication you should reduce it not increase so if it is increasing meaning the drug is a very bad drug so it has to be stopped so this is how you interpret you analyze the results hope it was clear thank you